Welcome to the introductory video on hospital pharmacy. By the end of this video you should be able to discuss in broad terms what hospital pharmacy practice entails and discuss the roles of pharmacists in hospitals. Well, what do I know about hospital pharmacy? I, like you, graduated from the School of Pharmacy at the University of Tasmania. I subsequently went on to do my intern year at the Royal Hobart Hospital and practiced there for a year afterwards as well. I now conduct and arrange a lot of the hospital visits across your degree and do a lot of tutoring at the hospital with you when you're in third and fourth year. So what do we know about the Royal Hobart Hospital? If you have a look at these photos here, they're back when the hospital was established, so this one in particular, established in 1804, so over 200 years ago. It's the second oldest hospital in the country, in fact, which is really quite amazing and it's quite a privilege to be able to work there and study there as students as well. You'll probably recognise it more from this photo. And as each year goes on, there are changes and improvements to the hospital all the time, and I'm sure you and your careers will also be able to support the hospital in this way. The Royal Herbert Hospital is the largest hospital within our state of Tasmania and is the major teaching hospital within our state as well. So while you're there, you'll see other medical students, nursing students, as well as, of course, your colleagues and other year groups. It's a great opportunity to get to know other students as they're going through similar health courses. And these are the people that you'll be able to collaborate with once you finish your degree. But why choose to work in hospital pharmacy? Personally, I felt the people, the work and the atmosphere were all really great and I really enjoyed it and I got a taste of this during my visits. Your first year hospital visit will be a very short visit but as time goes on you'll be finding that you spend more and more time there and then towards the end of your degree you'll find you spend up to three weeks at a time there. These few quotes here are from actual hospital pharmacists and why they chose to work in hospital pharmacy. So in the first one they state, the hospital pharmacy is everything that you could want for a career. It's got lots of choice, the chance to meet interesting people and make good friends. And the second one is a gentleman. One of the best things about hospital pharmacy is that you can progress up the career ladder relatively quickly if you are focused. I've been lucky enough to have had some great opportunities. There's a lot of variety in hospital pharmacy and I think this is what draws a lot of people in. And a lot of scope to work within a team of other health professionals to make sure that your patient has the best outcome. Often people also feel that hospital pharmacy is like working at the cutting edge. All the new innovations can be implemented quite quickly within a hospital environment and, and you as hospital pharmacists can see the effect of that almost immediately. But what do we do in hospital? Well, there's probably a few roles that we play. We play a role of a carer, so we have an active involvement in the patient's care. We make sure that we contribute to treatment decisions we make sure that medication is supplied effectively as well as used effectively and safely. And if you work as a clinical pharmacist, you're able to care for your patient one-on-one -on -one every day. So as I mentioned, we work within a team, both in the pharmacy department itself as well as in the, within our own medical and, and specialist teams. So the pharmacy department can employ up to about 50 pharmacists at a time, which is a very different environment to say, for instance, your community pharmacy which may only employ perhaps four to eight pharmacists if it's a very large pharmacy. If it's a chain of three or four pharmacies, you may find that you're working within a pool of, say, for instance, 10 to 15 pharmacists. But it's very rare that you'll actually work alongside that many pharmacists at any one time, whereas in a hospital pharmacy, you could have up to 30 to 35, perhaps even more pharmacists working on the same day within the same hours. So it provides a very supportive team environment. If you've got questions, you've got people that you can ask those questions of, and together you can find the answers if you're not sure. What's also really lovely about working in a hospital pharmacy is that you're a valued member of the hospital team. So say, for instance, you could work within a medical team with other doctors, nurses, allied health, such as occupational therapists, social workers, physiotherapists, speech pathologists, all these different people come together to work as a team and make sure that they take care of the patient as a whole patient, attend to all the various needs that they have within that hospital stay. One of the other big roles that we have as pharmacists is the role of an educator. We provide advice to doctors and nurses. 
we supervise and teach pharmacy students, so say for instance yourselves coming into hospital, as well as pre-registrants, so the intern pharmacists. We can also sit as members on specialised hospital committees and we can educate, advise and inform patients and their families on changes to their medical therapy. We also have the role of being able to, to educate the other staff about new medications as they come onto the market or changes in the regulations around those medications or the way that we use them. So if, say for instance if there is a new warning from one of the bodies say for instance the TGA which, which takes care of a lot of the therapeutic goods and the way that we use them in Australia then we're able to convey that message onto the doctors and the nurses and we're able to make sure that those changes are implemented smoothly and, and effectively within the hospital environment. If there's new medications that come onto the PBS or if there are new indications for medications we can provide in hospital or in workplace education seminars on them. Something else that we do as hospital pharmacists is that we make goods. So you're learning a lot about how to make creams and suspensions within PharmSci. As a hospital pharmacist, we're able to do this on a bigger level. So we do make those creams, we do make those suspensions that you're learning about, but we also make other different types of therapies. So cancer chemotherapy, intravenous therapy, so intravenous feeding, for instance, for those people who may be unconscious and need to be still fed some calories and fats and proteins and vitamins and minerals. If we need an alternative formulation for any medication that's not available on the market, then we can also create those. We have specialised areas that we call cytotoxic or sterile suites. So say for instance here we've got a cytotoxic suite and here we've got someone gowned up for either cytotoxic or sterile, most likely a sterile suite. And here dressing up and making sure that they wash their hands and their arms etc appropriately. And there's a really big protocol associated with this. And if you work in hospital pharmacy this is something that you'll learn on the job. I have to say that as a hospital pharmacist, it was one of my favourite, favourite roles, was working in the manufacturing section at the hospital. So we've talked about some of the aspects of what a pharmacist does within a hospital, but let's talk about the actual distinct roles, so the different job positions you could have and what you would do within those job positions. So probably the most important one is working in the dispensary. The dispensary is like the cornerstone of any practice, including clinical and community practice. Without it, Really, there's no use to having on any of the pharmacy services if you can't actually get the right drug to the right patient at the right dose at the right time. So all of our best clinical services are useless if, if we didn't have the dispensary working effectively and safely. So if we're ever short of staff other than the dispensary, we'll often pull back some of the pharmacy services for that day to make sure that we can deliver, to make sure that we can deliver the right medication to the right patients when they need it. And then once our staffing is back to normal, we can resume our normal pharmacy services. In the dispensary, there are both similarities and differences between what we do compared to a community pharmacy. We dispense medications for sure, but we dispense lots of different type of prescriptions. We dispense what we call inpatient prescriptions that are not stocked on the ward normally. So they're called non-impressed medications. And we do that by using medication charts and dispensing directly off them. We dispense narcotics, of course, and Schedule 4 medications. And that, of course, is the same as any community pharmacy. But the volume which we dispense is usually far, far greater. And that's because we're catering to various different wards, so including surgical wards and also surgical suites. We're also catering for patients who have got chronic pain conditions and patients who, have, who are coming in with various fractures and or for instance after they've had a fall or they've had a seizure and they've injured themselves. We dispense discharge prescriptions, so those prescriptions are for people who have had a stay in hospital and they're going home and they need a supply of perhaps medication they're already on but they're running low on, or new medication which we've started to prescribe for them in hospital. We also, dis we also dispense clinic and outpatient prescriptions someone in, in the community is still seeing one of their specialists, they could be prescribed on an outpatient prescription, their medication, and that could come into the hospital. The outpatient medications also tend to be medications which are perhaps not listed for the indication that the person is taking it for on the PBS. So 
medications that may be otherwise not available to them in the community or medications that perhaps they require but are too expensive for them in the community and are therefore subsidised by the government for them. So the dispensary is really a very busy place and full of lots of staff fulfilling lots of different and distinct roles. Now on to manufacturing. So we've already spoken about cytotoxics, so that can be chemotherapy agents, and our role in dispensing those would be to make sure that the dose is correct for that patient, that they're re receiving the right dose or volume. So if we can actually order some of these medications from, say for instance, Baxter in Victoria, then we will do that. That will reduce our workload significantly. But there are medications, cytotoxics, that have short half-lives that we can't actually order from interstate, in which case we'll prepare those directly on site. One of the other benefits to ordering from Victoria, other than reducing our workload, is that it can sometimes be cheaper to order these medications from a company that's producing these on large mass or large batches. But we ourselves also produce batches of medications. So we do batch preparations of various creams and ointments and powders. We put together the emergency trolley packs and starter packs. So the emergency trolley packs, for instance, are those packs which you'll see on an emergency trolley if someone suddenly has a cardiac arrest, their heart stops pumping and we need to give them various medications or they're having a seizure, we need to give them medications in an emergency situation. Someone will pull out the emergency trolley pack and everything that they need in that situation is all there. And each pack has its own expiry date based upon the medications that are within that pack and we make sure that we have those fully supplied on all the wards. Something else that we do is label up large batches of medications. So say for instance pain medications such as paracetamol and codeine or panadine fort which may be a medication that's quite often prescribed in emergency departments after hours but perhaps without the appropriate labelling that you would have normally if it was within hours. So we label up those medications with a blank name and to some extent instructions that are a little bit more flexible for the doctors to then put in a certain number of tablets. So say for instance, take blank tablets, blank number of days. And the doctors can then fill in, for instance, take two tablets four times in a day. This makes things just a lot simpler, a lot safer and a lot quicker. And then lastly, what I mentioned is that we also have sterile manufacturing, so where we make TPNs, which is Total Parental Nutrition, which is a sterile intravenous feeding solution. We make complex infusions, we can create home intravenous antibiotic therapy, and we can also create eye drops as well. Now we'll move on to probably what's the most commonly recognised role of the pharmacist within a hospital, other than dispensing, and that's as a clinical pharmacist. So you'll see here one of our lecturers, Leanne or Dr. Chalmers, at the bedside with the doctor assessing the drug chart and making sure that the therapy is appropriate. So this is what a clinical pharmacist will often do. They'll work on the wards, they'll work in clinical areas, for instance in clinics, and they'll make sure that those patients who are under their care, for instance if they were on a general medical team, those medical patients or if they're the orthopaedic team, the orthopaedic patients receive the best possible therapy. They're looking at the drugs to make sure they're correct. They're looking at the dose to make sure they're correct. They're looking at the administration. We're we making sure we're giving the right drug at the right dose at the right time. So say for instance, you don't want to be giving people sleeping tablets in the morning. You want to make sure it's in the evening and that it's in the right or the best possible condition. So if someone's having trouble swallowing, for instance, we want to make sure that we give them something that's easy to swallow, a smaller tablet. Perhaps we maybe could find a liquid preparation or manufacture a liquid preparation of that medication for that patient. We also want to make sure that all these medications are not just the right drug or the right dose, but that the best option for that patient. So we'll look at all the patient's medical conditions their swallowing ability, any other sort of social conditions, and we'll take all of that into consideration while we assess that patient's therapy. So in more specific terms, what we do is we clinically review medications, 
And one of the best ways that we do this is by conducting medication histories. So, say for instance, your mother is admitted into hospital overnight. She's seen by the doctors, they've done a full workup of her and they've written down her medications as well as all the other things that they need to look at. So they'll look at her vital signs, her blood pressure, her respiratory rate, how quickly she's breathing that is. They'll look at her pulse rate, how quickly her heart is beating. They'll check her temperature, they'll check her eyes, are they reactive? They'll check her movement, her walking, all these various different things. They might do scans, they might do blood tests, everything. And what we do as pharmacists is we come back and we then talk to the patient again. But we talk to the patient as specialists in medications. So we then take a little bit more time than what the doctors can afford because they've got many other things to do. And we spend that time with the patient. We go through their medications with them. I mentioned we participate in ward rounds. So each day the medical team will visit their patients in one large group together, the consultant with their registrars and with other health professionals such as pharmacists, maybe the nurses. And they'll have a quick review of the patient and make decisions on whether they should change therapy or they should continue with the way things are going. We monitor the outcomes of therapy so both the good outcomes, so we're making sure, for example, if someone is put on blood pressure medication, that that blood pressure medication is working. So say, for instance, we have someone who's come in after a heart attack and they've been put on blood pressure medication. What we do is monitor and make sure that blood pressure medication is actually working correctly for that patient, but also look out for adverse drug reactions at their therapy. We look out for any side and make sure that what we've chosen together as a team is the appropriate course of action. We liaise with GPs or general practice doctors, with community pharmacies and nursing homes, both to conduct our medication history, but then again once the patient's been discharged, to make sure that any changes to their therapy are conveyed to everyone that needs to know. We educate, so we provide medication information and medicines information to other health professionals, but we also provide medication counselling to patients and their carers. We conduct research. We conduct many, many different things. So you can see there's a lot of different aspects to the work of a clinical pharmacist. And I'm sure as time goes on, you'll learn more about it directly when you visit the hospital in third and fourth year. Now let's go look at what a medicines information pharmacist will do. So medicines information pharmacists will work solely on medication queries or medicine queries. They'll search and evaluate published medical journals and pharmaceutical literature to provide answers to any inquiries. So it could be an inquiry from a fellow pharmacist. For instance, a ward pharmacist may have a question about whether a certain medication has been known to ever cause any particular side effect. Or it may be from a medical professional such as a nurse or a doctor have a medicine related question that they're not really sure the answer of, if they can give their medicines information pharmacist a call and they'll follow up with that. They maintain up to date files of information for their colleagues, they prepare medicine information bulletins when there's changes or any new or interesting articles, they'll provide a bulletin that lists those articles and perhaps a short summary, and they assist with the development of drug use guidelines. So. For instance, if we want to use blood thinners in our hospital, which can cause bleeding if, if they're used incorrectly, then they could assist with the development of a guideline that will say how you could use those medications appropriately to make sure that they're used both effectively and safely. Now moving on to the work of what a pharmacist does as an administrator. So we, once you finish your degree, you may then go on to do your internship, you may then decide that you want to continue practicing in various different roles in pharmacy or you may decide you might like to get more into the managerial aspects of pharmacy and there are aspects of that in community pharmacy as well as in hospital pharmacy. So in hospital pharmacy we've got a lot more staff management and human resource work because as I mentioned before you can have up to 30 to 50 pharmacists in your role as, a, as an administrator or manager. You can then liaise with other management within the hospital and the Department of Health and Human Services. You assist in producing budgets for the, for instance, hospital, and you can coordinate statewide education of intern or pre-registrant pharmacists, professional development activities, and practice-based research. 
Speaking of research, the next role that we're going to talk about is the role of a clinical trial pharmacist. These pharmacists coordinate drug requisition and supply for multiple different trials and, and they monitor the progress of those trials. So, for instance, if they want to trial out a new medication that will have obviously have been through many other studies beforehand in the lab, with animals, etc. All these trials, of course, go through ethics and committees and they can sometimes then be conducted at various hospitals and a clinical trials pharmacist would coordinate these trials. They also coordinate the supply of other specialised medicines, so the Section 100 medications, which are really high-cost medications, and special access scheme medications, so medications that would not normally be available in Australia, that we import from overseas, and they're usually used only in circumstances where death may be likely to occur within the next few months if a person is not treated within that period with that medication. Another role that you may like to take up in the hospital pharmacy field is the role of a drug utilisation pharmacist, where you'd provide ongoing monitoring of different prescribing patterns within the hospital. Again, you'd also assist with the development of prescribing guidelines, just like the medicines information pharmacist did. You'd make sure that everything that we're using is cost effective so that we don't spend all the money at the hospital unnecessarily. You'd assist with the development of a drug formulary, so all those medications that we use within the hospital are within that formulary. And again, you could serve as a member of the statewide drug and therapeutics committee. As you can see, there's many roles that you can work in as a hospital pharmacist. The next one is in the role of information management. So as you may know, we use lots of different programs within pharmacy. And so this could include the dispensing system and in the hospital, the Royal Hobart Hospital, we use iPharmacy at the moment. It can also include clinical support programs. So farm care, for instance, is a program that we used to use to provide counselling sheets for medications that patients were taking at discharge. So as an information pharmacist with all these different programs, you could assist in maintaining them within the department, making sure that they're working effectively. You could also develop new programs. So these staff are responsible for drug procurement. So from our suppliers, if we're running low on certain medications or we need to identify if we can order in a medication that's not normally on our formulary. They also look at the stock on a regular basis, make sure that we have enough of everything, that the expiry dates are reasonable and that the stock is rotated so that those with short expiry dates are used first. Okay, having gone through all of that, so a hospital pharmacist day, how much time do you think they spend outside the pharmacy department working alongside other healthcare professionals? How much of their time do you think is devoted to management activities? How much of their time is devoted to supply of medications? Well, the answer is 47% and their time is spent actually outside the pharmacy department. 16% of their time is devoted to management activities and 37% of their time is devoted to supply of medications. So whereas typically in a pharmacy you'd automatically think that all the time was spent supplying medications, here it's only actually about a third of the time is spent to supply of medications and more time is actually spent working alongside other healthcare professionals. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you enjoy your time at the university and all the aspects of hospital pharmacy that you'll take part in within the next few years. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email your unit coordinator or myself.